Welcome to uh, another discussion about uh, projection, um, but this time we are going to look at just a single frame shot, just one picture without any information about the camera and we are going to use that image to create the real world scale 3D environment. And not only that, what you see here is the actual scale of New York City that I have created. Um, if you look at this um, uh, buildings that I have roughly created, they are aligned very much to the, um, the actual buildings. Um, not only that, but uh, this building at the far end is 267 meters tall. And I'm going to drop this ball um, from th that height and just see in uh, terms of the actual simulation, uh, physics-based simulation, how that you know, box drops onto the ground plane. And this uh, is uh, happening at the actual world scale. Uh, and sometimes when you are after visual effects that requires the physics um, of the real world, then you really need to create the uh, entire scene at the real scale. And this workflow will hopefully help um, if you have such a uh, situation. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to use a software software called uh, FSpy. It's a free software and I'll put the link in my description. Um, and that's where the process will start to create the uh, camera, which then we will import in Maya. And you can also import it in Houdini. Um, and from there, we'll take it to Fusion just to see how the projection work uh, is possible. So uh, enjoy the... Um, the discussion. Thanks. Okay, so we are going to start in FSpy. Uh, this is a free software and the first thing we need to do is load our image in here. Uh, now this picture was taken in uh, New York one day uh, about five years ago or so um, and I used my Samsung Galaxy S7 uh, which has a very small sensor um, and I have no idea how the sensor is calibrated for a picture like this. All I can tell is that this is 16 by 9 aspect ratio uh, and other than that, you know, there is no information. Now for the project uh, that I have, um, it's very important that I maintain the actual world scale in the 3D environment. Um, it's very difficult to create a 3D environment that would be uh, accurate enough for these buildings when you don't have any information about the camera, let alone maintaining the actual world scale in it. It's extremely difficult. So um, this software came in handy in, in doing so and we'll walk through the process. Um, this um, workflow here is based on the vanishing point. So it's um, it would work in the shots where you have this kind of lines that you see all these buildings they have they're facing on the same uh, in the same on the same side um, either they're facing let's say if you take this um, brick building you know you take this line here on the top of the uh, building and then the um, line on the side of the wall um, they are both facing the same direction and if you extend them enough then there will be a vanishing point where both lines will uh, connect and that's the basic principle on which this um, software operates so we are going to use the two vanishing point uh, solution um, I'm going to create vanishing points in negative Z direction and negative Y direction. And the reason is that I work mostly in Maya and uh, Houdini, and they are both Y up um, in the world space. And also Fusion is Y up. So I try to um, use that uh, layout in any place where I need to create the 3D uh, scene, also in Synthize, as you have seen. Um, so, because I'm confined to Y up, my ground plane is always going to be X and Z. So let's set that one up. Now, don't worry about how it is um, totally um, misaligned. Uh, we'll fix that in a minute. 
So let me dim the image so you can see all these lines. Now you see Z axis is blue, um, Y is green, and X is red. So we are going to deal with this blue line first. And I'm going to put um, this line on top of this building on the left hand side. And if I hit my shift key, I can actually see um, where this point is going to be. So I'll put it on top of this, uh, this terrace here. Um, I'll take the uh, another point, I don't need to hit shift there, and bring it down here and then hit shift to see, you know, how I fine tune that. So that will probably sit right here. Um, the second point is, uh, or the second vanishing line is going to be uh, somewhere here. So I'm going to put it on the side of this wall. Um, you, you can use any, you can also use this if you want to, uh, but I'm going to put it on top of this building right here. And then the second point is going to go right here. And that small segment is enough to create the, uh, the line that we are looking for as long as the line is properly placed. So it should be on this edge of the shadow. Just make sure they're both on the edge of the shadow. Yeah. Okay, so now let's deal with the Y axis. And for that, I'm going to use this building here. Um, and, and again, the same um, workflow process here that if you extend these lines in y direction negative y in my case um, they will meet at some point and that will create the vanishing point and that vanishing point uh, set of vanishing points one for the blue and one for green will basically um, calibrate the camera okay so let's take this one and i'm going to go all the way on the right hand side and use this building for that what helps is um, that uniform direction that all buildings are vertical it doesn't matter you know where they are they all are per uh, perpendicular to the ground and also when you use the same building for the x uh, for the z axis you know that they are both pointing um, in the same way so you can already see that my ground plane is um, is pretty much calibrated um, for um, for this um, for this shot, and um, this is my origin point of origin. Um, what I'm going to do is um, put it right here on top of this building. Now, ideally, I would like to put it on the ground, but since we cannot see the ground, I'm so high up in the um, uh, in the elevation. The best we can do is put it on top of a building, and then we can figure out in Maya you know, where we should put it um, so that it rests on the ground. Um, before I close this part, let me just make sure that all these lines are properly aligned. So now you can see that we have a good solution in terms of we can um, visualize how the 3D space uh, must be from this camera angle. Um, the couple of problems, one is that my camera here on the uh, Y axis on left right hand side, it says it's 2.85 meter elevation. Uh, granted that it's 2.5 meters from this point here but it still doesn't make any sense you know I was not only 2.5 or 2.8 uh, meters higher than the top of that building but the reason why that is happening is because we haven't given any scale information to this picture or the software so I'm going to create a line on the x-axis I'll start at the um, corner of this building And I'll extend it out to this corner where the wall angles, roughly around here. Now, what do, what good does that do? Unless we know how 
um, what is the length of this building, which I don't. I don't know what is the length of the building. I mean, right now it says four meters, but that obviously does not make any sense. If the building is this big, it cannot be four. So um, what I'm going to do is, um, now this doesn't always work out, but for New York, it definitely works out. Um, I'm going to go to um, Google, and in Google, I'm going to search um, Google Maps NYC. And let's go to New York City. Now, you have to know, obviously, where these buildings are located in the city. Um, <clears throat> that's easy for me because I know exactly where I was. It was in Lower Manhattan. And let's take a look at the building so that we can identify the building that we are after. Now, um, you can see this brick building right in the middle here. If I go to 3D, um, you can see it better. This building in the center of the screen um, is the one that we have with, um, if I undeem the image again, <clears throat> that's this building on the left, right? You can, you can see that it's the same building. Um, if you want to landmark a couple of other buildings, you see this green and uh, yellow building that is on the side right here in the center. That's this building here. Now, the one that we are interested in is in this black building with the angled wall, and that is down here. This is the building. So we found the building. Now, how do we measure this building's um, um, you know, length? I mean, you can look down here on the right hand side at the very bottom it says the scale that this is 20 meters but that still doesn't give us anything um, fortunately in google you can actually look at this in a different way that this is the that building um, what i'm going to do is right click right here at this corner where we are interested and start the measure distance and it creates a small point there and the second point that I want is right here so as soon as I click there it tells me that it's about 40.3 meters so for me if I use 40 that would be good enough so what I'll do is uh, instead of 4 now as soon as I put 40 meters see what happens to my camera it's already now up at 59.3 so call it 60 meters up from this building in elevation so that sort of makes sense that if um, if that building is um, that high and where I'm standing is you know what it looks like then it probably makes sense that I'm about 60 feet in elevation um, from there <clears throat> now there is a way to um, further uh, improve this situation uh, when we go to Maya, what we'll do is um, let, uh, let me go to Google uh, Earth this time. And in Google Earth, we will do the same thing. We'll go to New York again and find that building in Lower Manhattan. Um, where is that building? It's probably here. Yeah, so... That's that brick building right here, if I look at it from the side. And here is the building that we are interested in, right? So we found the length. Now, what I would like to know is how tall is this building? Because if I add 60 meters to that height, that would give me pretty accurate uh, height for where I was when I took the picture. Now, fortunately, in Google Earth, and again, this uh, Google, yeah, Google Earth, um, this wouldn't work everywhere, but here I was able to uh, get this sort of data, you know, for New York City, so it worked for me. Um, if you look at the lower uh, right-hand corner of my screen, you see it says 72. That actually is the elevation. So if I put my mouse on top of this building, you see it reads 95 meters. Now, that 95 is important because if I add that 95 to 60, uh, we would be at about 155 meter elevation. Now let's 
check it and see if it works. Now, I was in this building at that time, and I was on 35th floor of this building. So, I mean, we can count the floors, but if I just put my mouse on the side wall, see what happens in this um, lower right-hand corner, it gives me the elevation. So, if I go to 155, uh, roughly here, that probably is the floor where I was standing when I took this picture. Uh, and that makes sense because if I'm on the other side of this building in the window, um, it's likely that I would see this angle with this building and then showing up this building. I can see this green building and so forth. Um, yeah, so that gives us a lot of information to really make use of when we go to Maya. Now, how we'll go to Maya, I'll explain that in a minute. But before we do that, um, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. One is the uh, aspect ratio is 16 by 9. So, you know, keep that in mind because that we will need to use when we go to Maya because there is a bug in, uh, in the transfer process. The second thing that we will need to um, understand is this focal length. So if I click on focal length, um, you see the sensor size is the full frame. Well, this is not a full frame camera. Uh, now I can, uh, and you can choose the cameras from here, but Samsung Galaxy S7 is not listed. So that doesn't really help me. Um, so what I can do instead is, um, keep it to custom camera and either create the aspect ratio myself by doing a 20.3 in the um, in the vertical here and that is a is the aspect ratio at full frame sensor um, or I can really create exactly what it was which I think it's 5.5 uh, and uh, the other one is, I believe, 3.09375, if I remember correctly. So that gives me a focal length of about 4, which I think is correct, you know, given the small um, sensor size and a huge crop factor, uh, that makes sense. But, you know, I'm going to just use 36 and 20.3. It doesn't really matter because your angle of view is also going to be adjusted, you know, for the um, focal length that you will use here. Um, yeah, so those things are um, important to keep in mind. The sensor size and the uh, focal length. We'll come back to this uh, when we are um, in Maya. So let's uh, close it here and uh, take a look at Maya as to what happens. But before we do that, let's save this file. I'm going to save this as um, NYC Tutorial FSpy, which I already have, but I'll replace it. And also, I need to export the JSON file. And again, I'll use the uh, NYC Tutorial and replace that file. Okay, so we are done here, and we are going to go to Maya now.